Okay, so I am gonna talk a little bit about our program welding and fabrication technology. Uh, my name is Doug Rupik. This is a, I'm gonna turn the sound down. This is a sign that one of our students built while he was a student in our program. Um, yes, that's actual flames inside the sign. Um, they, it's propane powered. Um, the student said that, you know, before he entered our, our program or take, started taking classes with us, he thought, you know, metal and steel is this object that you, that's unchangeable. You can't do anything with it. I mean, it is what it is. But once he got into our program and started taking classes, he realized, hey, I can cut this stuff up. I can put pieces together. I can build things with this. I can, hey, this is really cool stuff to work with. So uh, he ended up making this sign before he graduated and donated it to our program. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's, I, I just wanted to show what is possible with this. Now, welding can take you in different, into different places, different careers. This is one of our graduates who is, uh, he is 43 stories in the air overlooking Lake Union. Not all welders do this kind of work. Um, only about 10% of welders ever work in construction. Uh, but what, what is welding? It's, it's, I'm gonna read the blurb on the side. Welding and metal fabrication are stock tools of many trades. In the United States, the demand for trained welders and fabricators continues to rise in the small shop settings. Um, the range of job opportunities and skill needs is diverse and, and you, they are looking for people that can read blueprints. They're looking for people that can do layout work. They're looking for people that can cut and fit parts. They're looking for people that can tack and production weld, uh, that, that can finish metals. Um, so there are a lot of different career opportunities for somebody that has welding skills um, and a variety of welding skills. And our program is, is designed to, you know, give you the stuff you need to get started in a career in many different industries. And uh, if you have any questions, as, as we go along, I, I do want to say, if you have any questions, put them in chat, raise your hand with the, uh, the raise your hand button on the Zoom feature, whatever. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you a question. What, can you think of something that you use that is not, doesn't have any, welling has nothing to do with it? Think about that for a minute. When you get up in the morning, when you go to school, when you go to work, when you, you know, go hang out with your friends, whatever, any objects that you come across that don't involve welding whatsoever, can you think of anything? And if you can think of something that you think welding has nothing to do with this thing, put it in chat. I'm interested to see if you can think of anything. Well, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, truth is, is that welding is, it impacts just about every, every, yes. Do you have a, uh, what is this? Chat. Yes, let's see. A ceramic pot. Ooh, excellent. Excellent. Ceramic pot. So does the ceramic itself have anything to... No, the ceramic itself, the pot itself doesn't have any welding in it. However, the kiln it was fired in probably has a welded metal frame, unless it's like one of these brick kilns that has no metal on it. But if it's a brick kiln that has no metal on it, those bricks were probably made in a factory that had metal welded structures, tools to build the bricks, unless the bricks were handmade in a wooden frame. But then the nails that put that frame together were manufactured on an assembly line that had welding in it. So the ceramic pot was probably delivered to the store on a truck that had welding on it. But, but okay, good one though, ceramic pot. It, yes, you're correct. Ceramic pot doesn't have any, 
any welding on the pot, but surrounding the life story of that ceramic pot, there's welding all around it. The truth is, is that with, if there was no welding in the world, we would still be living in the stone age because it literally was working with metal that brought us out of the stone age. And welding is, you know, a, a, a big part of we're the, the, the world we live in, whether it's the cars we drive, the roads we travel, the bridges we cross, the buildings we live in. But uh, no, ceramic pot, love it. Good, nice. Um, let's go on. We, we don't have a whole lot of time. So um, I like it. So this is a, a video. Uh, let's see, let's, can I, there we go. This is a video of our shop a part of our shop and it has a two-story structure and this pipe is part of the two-story structure this is part of the two-story structure the yellow handrail around the second floor is part of our two-story structure and students built this and uh, you can see the sparks where some students are welding on the structure it's it's a continual we're continuing to build on it um, there's a student there that is working on the stairs that's in the background, uh, which were made by students. And he's doing a little bit of revision work on those stairs. So our students, they, they can work in industry realistic settings, whether the industry is construction, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's custom fabrication, we have um, settings or things that they do that are very much like industry. Uh, students learn a variety of welding processes, um, students can work on personal projects, they can work on artwork, they can work on furniture, they can work on select vehicle projects. Um, not everything that goes on a vehicle, um, we don't want just anything. If, if the weld were to break and the car were to crash, um, we don't want anything like that made on the vehicle. Um, but there are some things that some students do for their vehicles. And a lot of our students are often recruited into industry by employers before they even graduate. So we, we have a, um, it's very hands-on. So this is uh, one of our instructors, Stephanie. She's been welding professionally since 2017, uh, primarily in aerospace and TIG welding. She graduated from our program um, about three years ago. She started working in uh, soldering and fabrication and building things uh, as, as a little kid in her father's shop. And she's been teaching as uh, teaching adults since 2012. So she, she's very good at teaching and communicating much better than me, probably. Um, me, I have been welding professionally since 1989. I almost said 1918. Um, I've welded in repair industries. I've welded in custom fabrication shops. I've welded in, on assembly lines and factories. And I've worked in construction for about half my career. This is a picture of me on top of the nine story office building at SeaTac Airport um, before it was finished, before the roof was on it. I'm standing there on the structure. I completed my apprenticeship with the Iron Workers Union in 2002. I've worked as a foreman in the Iron Workers, as a general foreman um, in construction, building high rises and bridges and that kind of thing. I worked as an instructor in the Iron Workers Apprenticeship for seven years, and I've been an instructor in the state college system for about 11 years now. Um, so that's me, that's who I am. Um, this is a short video of Lulu, she is welding on a thing here, and I'm just going to speed it up. We also offer an iBEST program. That's for people that are English language learners. I'm going to turn this down. People that are English language learners and um, people that need, um, well, for instance, I ha I've had students that have not been high school graduates in our college program, and as they're earning credits towards their college degree, they're also earning their GED or high school diploma. So um, our program is open to pretty much anybody. Um, so uh, one of our students right here is building an infinity cube. 
and uh, it, it turned out very nice. It's kind of like a coffee table, but it's it's going in all kinds of different directions. And uh, we, you know, we have free weld Fridays. So any students that want to work on any personal projects on Fridays, go for it. Uh, we'll help you out. We encourage that. This is a crow made out of steel. And uh, one of our students was an artist and was well, she still is an artist. And she made this crow out of welded. She welded a whole bunch of steel together and carved on it. And I don't know if you can see, but the back feather right here is actually the blade from butter knife. So there's some butter knives in here. There's some forks and spoons and stuff. But uh, she made that in, in our welding shop. And uh, I helped her um, put the patina or the finish on it. What we did is we took used motor oil coated it in there and we used a torch to kind of like seasoning a cast iron skillet, only it was a, a crow made out of steel. So um, we have students build stuff like that. And of course, our sense of fashion in this program is beyond compare. We are fashionistas in our program. And this is of course, another picture of Lulu. She's doing a different kind of welding in this shot than she was in the video earlier. This is what's called tungsten inert gas welding, used in aerospace a lot and in high-end stuff with uh, different non-ferrous metals uh, oftentimes. So uh, we teach all that. Now, I wanna say this, you don't have to be a doctor or a lawyer to be a successful um, person. So I am all for education, I have, I've been to college, I have college degrees and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this little cartoon says a lot. The guy in the striped shirt is saying, this fall, I'm going to trade school to be a welder. And then the other guy that's got the university sweatshirt on is thinking in his head, oh, what a loser, he's gonna be a welder. But the little square box says that welder is gonna be making, as soon as he graduates, he's gonna be making $50,000 a year. That's about $1,000 a week. That's about $25 an hour. Whereas the other guy um, isn't gonna make that much, statistically speaking. Um, now, I, again, I wanna say I am for education. I have a, I have a bachelor's degree, I have a master's degree. I, you know, I'm for education. I am saying this, just because somebody chooses to work with their hands or work in a professional technical career doesn't make them any less than somebody that pursues uh, an academic career. So um, I wanna be very careful because I teach in a college, I wanna be very careful about how I say stuff like this. Um, I'm very much for welding, I'm very much for um, people that work with their hands. Okay, so careers, jobs. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says that the job growth rate for welders will be about 6% for the next few years. The American Welding Society predicts that almost a half a million welders, new welders, will need to enter the workforce within the next few years because most welders are old and gray like me. I'm either gonna retire or die soon. Somebody needs to take my place in industry. And there's going to be a lot of people that need to go into the welding field and there's going to be huge demand, which means salaries are going to go up. You're going to make more money um, here in the next few years. About 60% of welders work in manufacturing. That's working in a factory building stuff. Um, some of my students go on to work at places like Travis Industries where they build wood stoves. Uh, some go into like Terex where they're building um, construction equipment, heavy equipment. About 10% of welders work in construction where we go out and we build buildings and we build bridges and so forth. The average welder hourly weight rate nationwide is about $22 an hour. Here in the Seattle area, it's a bit higher. Um, starting wages for our program graduates are somewhere between 20 and $25 an hour on average if they go into fabrication and production, working in a shop. If they go into construction, specifically if they go into something like the iron workers union or the uh, pile drivers union or the pipe fitters union, 
they're going to start at about $25, $26 an hour. And in just a few years when they become journeymen, um, they're going to be making um, somewhere in the neighborhood of $40 per hour on the paycheck with their benefits paid by the employer. So in, instead of the insurance being taken out of your pay, they put it on top of your pay, which is huge. It, make, it means that um, if I go back to work as an iron worker tomorrow, I'm going to be paid a dollar per minute for my services. Um, a dollar per minute is a lot, actually. Um, a dollar a minute puts a smile on my face. So, but the average nationwide hourly rate for a welder is $21.73 an hour. Here in the, our area, it's a, a little bit higher, um, especially when you gain some industry skill after you finish school. Welding skills are transferable between various industries. So in our program, we teach um, stick welding, we teach wire feed welding, flux core welding, TIG welding. They, I don't know if these mean anything to you or not, but we teach different processes. And if you get skilled in these different processes, that means that, let's say that you work in construction and construction kind of you know, slows down, you get laid off. Um, if you're a good welder, you can go over to the shipyards and work in the shipyards in the maritime in the industry. You can go work in fabrication in a fabrication shop. You can work in a muffler shop. Um, your welding skills are very transferable from not just job to job, but different industries. Um, welding is kind of like keyboarding, you know, with, you know, typing. Um, a lot of different jobs require you to be able to type on a computer, but that's not really why they hire you. Um, welding is kind of like that. It's a skill that you take from different job to different job. Uh, maybe that's not a good analogy, uh, but anyway. Uh, the Puget Sound area has many maritime shipyard uh, job opportunities. A lot of construction, especially right now, a lot of construction is going on. Pipeline industries manufacturing, aerospace, and there are just a ton of little mom and pop shops in Georgetown and the Soto District um, where they have two or three welders working. You can always find a job when you're a good welder. So um, let's see, moving on. Here's another video of um, one of our students welding on the structure. I'm gonna kill the sound. Um, now, how long does it take to finish the program? You can complete this program in five quarters, which is one year and three months. Um, depends on the academic classes you have to take in addition to it, like how much math and English and all that. We admit new students every quarter, including summer quarter. And um, sometimes you can change the class order. For instance, right now we have um, one student, it's strange. This is the first quarter in a long time that we've had just one student sign up for the first quarter class. So rather than have one student in the first quarter class, I put him with the second quarter students. And then uh, summer or fall, we'll put him back with the first quarter students. So there's, there's a little bit of flexibility between the class levels you take. Um, so class orders changed sometimes, but um, we do take in new students every quarter. We do have a sister program at Vigor uh, Marine Industrial on Harbor Island. Um, they, it's a two quarter program that is specifically geared toward the shipyards, working on building ferries. Right now they have a bunch of Navy ships in there and they're reworking the Navy ships. They're changing plumbing in there and you know adding stuff and taking stuff out, changing stuff. So um, we do have students that come from go from our program into their program. We do also have students that go from their program into our program. We teach many of the same classes. Um, and again, like I was talking about earlier, if you're a good welder in one field, a lot of times you can just jump ship, so to speak, and change to another field and be just as successful in that industry. Um, this program is a generalist program. We want to prepare you for entry level employment. So whereas Vigor, they are very specific in shipyards. They, they train you very well for the shipyards. We are um, more of a generalist program. 
we teach you a little of this, a little of this, a little, we get you familiar with many different aspects so that your um, job opportunities are broader. And once you get into the job, then you really learn uh, a lot about that specific job. Um, many of our students actually start working in industry while they're still students. And uh, sometimes it's tough to get them to finish because they get a good job and they say, hey, I, I just wanna go to work. Um, of course, we encourage people to finish. So typically we run Monday through Friday. We have, right now we have two shifts. We have a morning section and an afternoon section. Morning section goes from seven to 11, afternoon section from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And on Fridays, I think they start at noon and go to four. Many of our students work while attending school. Um, typically you need to purchase less than a thousand dollars worth of tools. And you think, oh man, that's, well, compared to automotive, compared to diesel, compared to um, aerospace uh, maintenance, um, it's pretty cheap program. Um, and you don't have to buy all those tools all at once. There are some tools that you're going to need day one, but a lot of them you can, you know, get later on in the program. So and I think that also includes the cost of, no, that doesn't include the cost of the computer. So um, for college admissions, stick around after this uh, breakout room in the main session. My contact information is there on the screen. Take a screenshot of it. Um, follow us on Facebook, uh, at Awesome Weld on Facebook. If, you know, I know Facebook is for old people. Um, I don't have an Instagram account yet. Um, but uh, my email address is doug.rupik at seattlecolleges.edu, 206-934-6818. And on the web, the information is also available on the college website. So, Aiden, you got any questions for me? I'm, I'm dying to answer questions. I'm tired of talking. Ah. I, I had a question. Um, yeah. is, is there a math, is there a math score students must get to, um, on, on a placement test? Is there a cutoff score? There, I want to, there is, I don't know what it is. And oftentimes we will waive it for a student to get started because the welding itself is a manual skill. Um, it's the other stuff that depends on math, like reading the blueprints, uh, reading tape measures and stuff. So I believe a student can get started. 